Before 90210, there was Degrassi. You might know this guy as Joey Jeremiah. Pat Masterani is in the chair. You are gonna be the coolest guy at Degrassi High. Hey, girls. Did I tell you how beautiful you both look today? We don't talk to eighth graders. That is a beautiful perfume you're wearing. My mom wears the same kind. Shall we? Hey, Pat. Hey, Rob. How are you, buddy? Good, good. I'm excited. This is yeah, great. I'm sure, man. We're going to clean you right up. All right. Take a seat, buddy. Well, in case you haven't noticed, uh, it's been about 20 years since I've been in a, yeah. a barber shop. Yeah. So uh, I've, actually, shave it. <laughs> I've been actually looking forward to doing something like this for a long time. So, well, I think we'll shave it down, give you a nice head shave, okay. and we're going to shave under here. Perfect. We'll leave the beard, right? Leave the beard. I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying. Yeah, it's good. It's good. A little Looks patchy good. right now, but uh, Looks good. I'm digging it. Pat uh, is a great guy. He's down to earth. Uh, he treats everybody the same from, uh, you know, whoever he meets. He's very gracious. I've been wanting to do this for a really, really long time, and I just never had the opportunity. And I think this is definitely an experience that every guy should try at least once. How's the drive-in? It was good. It wasn't bad at all. Um, I thought it'd be a lot busier uh, during the day, uh, rush hour, but I made it down no problem. And uh, going home, as long as you leave by four o'clock, you'll be yeah, fine. Yeah, you know, it's my pop's birthday today, so oh, I nice. wanted to take him out for dinner. And uh, you guys are Italian, your dad's Italian, right? Yeah, yeah. born both in my Italy. Parents, both my parents were born in Italy, immigrated to, to Canada when they were uh, youngins in their uh, early 20s. Fell in love. And he was born where? Where in Italy? Nicastro, in Calabria. Oh, yeah, my dad's Calabrese, too. Oh, yeah. Born in so Sederno Marina. Oh, yeah. Yeah, stubborn is right, buddy. <laughs> stubborn is right. Yeah, both my parents uh, were farmers, and, uh, you know, I guess uh, for our parents' generation, uh, there was a time there where there just wasn't opportunities, wasn't much employment. It's still leave. My dad left because of uh, the two years there in the Army. Right? Oh, yeah. Do the Army. Yeah, I think that's another reason why my father left at age yeah, 18. A lot of them did. They didn't yeah. want to do two, I think it was a year or two years they got to do. I yep. think it's gone now. I think so too, and uh, they basically had family already established in, in Canada, so that's why they chose Canada over other countries like Australia or the States. Um, yeah, my family too, New York, Australia, yep. the boats went three ways, three directions, I said. Yep. One to New York, one to Canada, one to, uh, my grandfather came in Pier 21, that's the yeah. ship he came on, that's his passport picture, that's his ticket, that's the ship. We have a lot in common, we had family members, both came in on Pier 21 in Halifax. Oh, it's amazing that you have all that history. I actually uh, visited uh, Pier 21 in Halifax it's about nice there. five years ago. Uh, my wife's uh, parents also came in uh, at Pier 21. 21. Yep, back in the 60s. That's and nice uh, there. It was just really, really nice. I, I photographed and filmed as much as I could so that when I came home, I could show my parents and say, do you remember this? Do you remember being here? Do you yes. remember being quarantined? Because there yeah. was a big fear of, uh, you know, people bringing in uh, <clears throat> certain diseases or whatever. and. Uh, I remember my dad saying, you know, they gave us like uh, Wonder Bread as food. And uh, yeah, yeah, nothing much there. And then no names, and that's where the term WAPS came from without papers. Without papers, and uh, Munja Cake came from the, the saying is, look at these people, they eat cake, but it was <laughs> bread. Say it, Munja Cake. Munja Cake. And uh, so, yeah, it was a really uh, nice experience for, for me and my wife to go and see that. Uh, was it just vacation or were you shooting something? We were actually celebrating our 10th anniversary. Nice. And, yeah, you've been um, married for 15 years. 15 years. And, nice. That uh, doesn't happen very often. Well, you know, we've known each other since high school. Hey, you're not allergic to anything? Coconut oil, castor oil? This is a little pre-shave oil. Perfect. I make myself. Really? We'll loosen everything up. Does it go good with salad? Yeah. Actually, there is <laughs> olive oil in there. <laughs> olive oil is the last ingredient in there. <laughs> So was this something that you basically fell into because it was a family business and you just said, well, I'm going to follow in the footsteps? <clears throat> well, I did pops? it from 96 to 98. Yeah. I didn't like doing women's hair. Right. For reasons we're not going to get into. Just, <laughs> you know, men are a lot easier. Let's put it that way. Right. right? So this is, how's your... Uh, My pain tolerance is, yeah. is good. No worries. Is that all right? Yeah. No, that okay. That's good. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to put pan on there and then we're going to get this all nice and heated up. See? Perfect. There. Opening up the pores, obviously. That's it. That's exactly what we're doing there. We could do uh, so maybe a new role for you right here, yeah, I buddy. I think so. You can do Italian. Look the part. That's it. It must be an Italian thing, because I worked for my father's construction <laughs> company for almost ten, over 10 well, years. Well, you just said it, buddy. Hair, yep. construction, yep. or uh, butcher. Yep, yep. Go on, sorry. I just, uh, you know what? I, it was a, I, 
I grew up with it. My dad would come home smelling like asphalt and diesel. That's it. I was a kid and I just thought it was such a manly man thing to do. And, My and grandfather was a tile man. Yep. Yeah. Tile man built his whole house. It's a lost art because nobody wants to do manual labor anymore. Trades. Everybody wants to sit at a desk. We have the same traditions. We grew up the same. Our parents came to Canada for a better life. And uh, we, uh, we appreciate that and we made the best of it and try to make them proud as much as we can. This is definitely a lost art, and it's amazing that a young guy like Rob wants to, to save it and keep it around and, uh, and keep uh, people like me um, uh, to, to experience it. So uh, are you coming to Comic-Con this year? Uh, absolutely. Uh, Niagara Falls Comic Con, Hamilton Comic Con, I love them all. I've been, You're a big uh, comic collector, aren't you? I, I, you know what? I fell into it again after about five, about five years ago. Um, you know, it was something I did in my childhood, and I think we get to that age where you want to reminisce a uh, nostalgia period in your life, and uh, comic books, uh, that's just something that just reminds me of my youth. Would you say you had an expensive one? You had a limited edition um, or something? Well, I mean, it, it all started out with the junk. You know, you went, yeah. you, 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 grabbed your, comics. you grabbed your old box from the, the cellar and you found what you had thinking you, you were going to retire and then you realize you just have garbage. <laughs> yeah, and th then, then you realize there's there's uh, the guy from like uh, the live version of the Simpsons comic book guy it, tells you there's a bend in this and it's worth nothing. Worth nothing. Yeah, and then I just started meeting people in the community and, and other comic book dealers and sellers and collectors and you just listen and you learn and I started going to comic conventions because because you know Degrassi is now part of Canadian yeah. television pop For culture, sure. and I got to meet more and more people, and all of a sudden I'm starting to collect <laughs> books, and I'm finding collections all over the city, and, and buying them up, and selling them, and trading them, and meeting more people in the community, and I was really in, enjoying this this these people that I was meeting and, yeah. and becoming friends with. I and go I go every year. I love it. I love it too, and. Uh, my, my holy grail is uh, Amazing Fantasy 15, uh, first appearance of Spider-Man, which I was able to pick up a few years ago. What's that worth? Uh, now, it's probably worth about $23,000. Whoa. Uh, but in I condition? Yeah, it's in pretty good condition. What do you a, got? It locked up in a safe? It's in a safety deposit box at oh, the bank. Wow. And, um, you know, it's something that I didn't what, what buy. Is, what, what number is on that one? What number? Oh, you mean grade? Yeah, no, like is it an early Spider-Man? What's in the issue? Well, it's, what it's, makes it so expensive? Well, it makes it so expensive because it's the first appearance of Spider-Man ever. Oh, it's ever. the first appearance, just like the Wolverine there on my poster. Exactly, the Hulk 181, issue 181 that is the first appearance of that Wolverine. That one's not 23 grand, uh, but uh, it's it's getting up there, I yeah, think. Yeah, no, I think, you know, people our age are looking for things that represent their youth or, or they they wanted something when they were a kid that they obviously couldn't afford, and, and now we're, we're part of a... A generation of people trying to, to regain their youth or, or, or revisit a the past. 80s are coming experience. back, buddy. Absolutely. When did the grassy start? What year did it start? Uh, 90s? I think we started in 85, dude. Yeah, see? That's um, part of pop culture, too. It's like the 90210 Canada. It, it is. And believe it or not, 90210 was supposed to be Degrassi because the producer, uh, Aaron, Spelling, yeah, Aaron Spelling, wanted to buy the series and, really? and do it in the States. And uh, he said, well, let's get rid of all the kids. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Recast he did, eh? everybody. Yeah, let's make them... Uh, and make, and, them, and make them pretty. Yeah, make and, them pretty. Uh, yeah, you so guys my, are pretty. No, we weren't. You my gotta, producer said, "No, no, thank you very much. We'll we'll keep it in Canada." That would have been good, no? no? For for the producer, for the producer, yeah, but not so that's for good me. that he kept it. Uh, no, I, I enjoyed my time on the show. It was it was a good experience. I was glad to come back and revisit the past, but doing the next generation. But anyone else come back from the? Uh, yeah, my my buddy uh, Snake and, and Spike right. and Caitlin, they all came back, and we had a nice little uh, reunion, eh? Reunion special, and then. Kevin Smith, I don't know if you yeah, know yeah. him. Yeah, Kevin Smith, director. he was at, I uh, met him at uh, Comic-Con last year. Yeah, he's a big fan of the show, and uh, he came and did an appearance on the series uh, back in 04, 05. And, awesome. Uh, yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun, but... Uh, I'd like you to know. get him in the chair. Oh, uh, that would be fun. Chop, what, what? He doesn't look like he gets many haircuts, though, Kevin said. <laughs> I was going to say, what are you going to shave, his chest? He don't look like he gets many haircuts. <laughs> well, maybe I'll put a phone call into him and see if, he, uh, if he'll come out. Uh, I love the ambiance of this place. It definitely felt comfortable, cozy, like a man cave, uh, manly man room. So what are you working on these days, buddy? What's next for you? Well, I had a good year this year. It was. Um, it started off working with Brooke Shields on a on a movie that we were shooting up in Sudbury, and nice. then uh, it ended with me going to South Africa for twelve days. You so, were with her? No, this was a separate project, a different project. And now, uh, you know, we're looking to get into some sci-fi TV shows. Nice. I know we're shooting Star Trek in or start next. Uh, segment of uh, Star Trek in Toronto this year. Oh, nice. So I'm hoping to do some cameos on that. I see how you caught a beat in there. It was pretty gory death and bitten. Was it bitten you're in? Oh, right geez, in yeah. I did bitten a couple years back. That was pretty with, gruesome, uh, eh? Laura Vandervoort. What a beautiful young woman she is. Uh, 
Mm -hmm. Got beat up there, eh? I got my tongue ripped out by her, and I died a horrible death, and she lit me on fire. Nice. But, it's like uh, real life with women, yeah, right? pretty much. Yeah. Pretty much. You don't watch your step. Yeah, that's but, it. Uh, yeah, no, the goal is to hopefully continue on doing what I'm doing. I'm enjoying living in Toronto and working out of Toronto, and if I can do some sci-fi stuff, then it just legitimizes me appearing at Comic-Cons a little bit more if I can get into some sci-fi TV shows like Star Trek and things of that nature. I, I'm, I'm loving it, because yeah. I did drama for so many years on Degrassi, and... Now it's nice to do well, something. Yeah, when did you know? That's what I wanted to ask. When did you know you wanted, I'm, I'm going to be an actor? Hey, yeah. Dad, uh, uh, I don't want the hammer. I'm going to go. Uh, I fell into it, brother. I honestly just picked up a flyer at school one day. Said, what saying, grade was that? Grade nine. And uh, it just said, kids wanted for new TV show. No experience necessary. And I went, oh, this sounds like it could be fun. And filled it out and went in and auditioned. And three weeks later, they gave me the part of uh, Joey Jeremiah. And wow, boom, just like that, Just eh? like that. You never know what, what's gonna happen in your life. You never know what opportunities are around the corner, or, you know, right place, right time. Uh, you know, it was just something that, it could be just destiny, you know, it was meant to be. Yeah. Uh, I always thought, I'd get mad at my dad when he'd go plow snow in the winter times. And I was a little kid and I said, Dad, take me with you. I wanna learn what you do, because I thought like, I was You don't gonna, wanna do this. You know, like, I thought I thought I was gonna, and he wanted something better for me. He wanted. Yeah, they all do. They always do, and uh, he 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 pushed me into the acting and said, "No, no, go for it, go for it." You know, the guy's been on TV over thirty years, and you know he's uh, he's part of Canadian pop history. Pat, we're gonna come out. How's that feel? That feels great. Okay, that's great. Thank you. Clean. Might get lucky tonight. <laughs> Would you be right there? <laughs> Well, then I will be coming seeing you there every you week. There you go. <laughs> I think you're all, you're all set, That's buddy. That's brilliant. Thank Good? you so much, Rob. Okay, brother. Thanks for coming. Thank you for having me. Anytime, oh, man. Next Anytime. time I'm in town, I'm going to We'll do house calls. Sure. We'll do pasta at your place. You're cooking. Back alley barbershop. That's it. Thanks, brother. Okay, buddy. I had a blast. I can't wait to come back and visit Rob again and get another uh, shave. Uh, it was a great experience, and I had a lot of fun doing it. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go visit him one day. We'll go for a ride, you know, take a nice drive, and um, we'll go see Pat and, uh, you know, get together and uh, maybe make a little sausage. Have a little bit of vino. <laughs> <laughs>